Hi guys, this is Asal. In my last few videos, I started talking about criminal law. I started with mens rea, actus rea. I talked about causation. I made another video on homicide. And now I'm moving on to this fun rule. Okay, I don't know if you can read my handwriting, but it's the felony murder rule. Now I'm going to place it here. So, um, what is the felony murder rule? I'm going to start with the common law. But before I start reading this and like reading the rule word by word, I want to tell you exactly what it is. Okay, it's basically what happens when someone's committing a felony, like rubbing a bank or like doing something that is felony. And in commission of that felony, there's suddenly a murder. So, under the common law, a defendant may be convicted of murder if the killing occurred during the commission or attempted commission of a felony what I just said, right? So this is like a form of first degree murder. And this rule lets the prosecutor charge the defendant with murder, even if the defendant lacked um, malice and afterthought, okay? Because this attributes the malice to the defendant based on the commission of the underlying felony. Okay, so let's move on. And I'm going to tell you why, because it would be very unfair to punish someone for murder if the death was like unintended and not malicious, right? But like when you're like committing a felony, it like kind of becomes intended. You know, you're kind of going in there, you're rubbing a bank and you're thinking if the security guard comes towards me, I have a gun and I'm going to shoot him. So, you know, that's kind of um, built into it. So I'm just going to move on. I'm going to talk about um, a few states, like some states, all felonies may be used as predicates to felony murder, but most states, only inherently dangerous felonies may be used as predicates for felony murder. Okay, so what is an inherently dangerous activity? Okay, an inherently ac a dangerous activity is an activity that by its nature poses a high risk and a high risk of injury. So I just want to give you like kind of like an example of what an inherently dangerous activity is because like, you know, that's how you'd understand it. For example, an inherently dangerous activity would be something like, you know, a robbery, a burglary, or like a rape or arson or kidnapping. You see, those activities are inherently da dangerous. And, you know, in just a second, after I define the merger doctrine, I'm going to tell you why they're inherently dangerous. You know, it all has to do with the causation and just bear with me one second, I'll tell you. So, um, you know, there are also some limitations to the felony murder rule. So th that's why there's the merger doctrine. This, under this rule, a felony cannot be predicate for felony murder unless the felony is legally distinct from the act of killing, okay? So I'm going to wrap it up with our common law definitions of felony murder, and I want to move in to our model penal code, okay? So under the model penal code, um, murder, okay, is a killing done recklessly under the circumstances of manifesting extreme indifference to the value of human life. Okay, so there are like some differences between common law and model penal code under the common law. Typically, typically inherently dangerous activities are like, as I told you, robbery, burglary, um, rape, arson, kidnapping and all of that. But under the model penal code, a defendant acts with recklessness and extreme indifference while committing robbery, rape, forcible deviant sexual behavior arson, burglary, kidnapping, and felonious escape, okay? That is like when you're like trying to escape from prison. So, um, under the common law, the defendant may, may not avoid liability for murder, but under the model penal code, the defendant may avoid liability for murder by rebutting the presumption of the recklessness and extreme indifference and showing that he or she lacked the necessary mental state. Okay, so I just talked about the limitations to the predicate felonies that trigger the rule. And right now, I just kind of like want to move on real fast. And I want to talk to you about the approaches to causation. Okay, so there are like three approaches to causation. I'm going to say this and I'm going to say goodbye and end the video because, you know, there's more to the felony rule that I can explain. But I want to keep this video real short. Okay, so um, the three approaches to causation. The first approach is the agency approach, which is in furtherance of the crime, right? And then the second approach is the proximate cause approach, 
which the death approximately caused by the defendant and the, the defendant can be charged with murder. So basically, if the defendant approximately caused the murder of this person, then he can be charged with murder. And then, um, what is the proximate cause? Let me define that real quick. The result is, proximate cause is the result is reasonably foreseeable, okay, foreseeable consequence of the defendant's conduct. So as long as it's a foreseeable consequence of the defendant's conduct, that is proximate cause. And then the last thing that I'm gonna describe is provocative doctrine, okay? Provocative act doctrine. The defendant created the dangerous atmosphere and then plus the homicide occurs, okay? And then here the defendant will be liable for murder. So I hope this helps. I hope you enjoy studying felony murder. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.